We know China's not sitting still. It's pilot, piloting or investing in next generation clean tech solutions. Talk to us about this because uh, these energy breakthroughs uh, kind of need uh, the scale, the cost efficiency to, to be really deployed in a viable way. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's absolutely correct. So just like what we saw with electric vehicles or solar panels or the early years of lithium ion batteries, the technology is known. Uh, we know from a physical or a chemical standpoint that these technologies can work, but maybe they need scale, maybe they need adoption, maybe they need to iterate many, many times before they become, become cost effective. And that's where China's at right now with the next generation of technologies. When we talk about things like carbon capture, yeah, it's very expensive right now, but could it become cheaper? Well, that's what we were saying about solar panels 15 years ago, and look, they became cheaper. Same thing with something like green hydrogen, very expensive right now, maybe not a great use of hydrogen at the moment, but could it become cheaper and more scalable and cost effective? Well, what were we saying about batteries 15 years ago? It does feel like for a lot of these next generation technologies, we are on the same turning point like we were with those other key technologies one generation ago. These are next generation technologies or clean tech technologies. Are they all grown in house, homegrown, or are there partnerships involved? Both. Of course, uh, sometimes these technologies were ones that, you know, we talk about getting from zero to one. A lot of the times that zero to one research work might have been done 20 or 30 or 40 years ago in a laboratory somewhere in the United States or Europe. But then once it got to one, it never was able to iterate beyond that. We saw things like in next generation nuclear technology, solar, et cetera, et cetera. And now China's taking that and going from one to N, right? That's the trendy phrase now, to, to iterate and scale it up to commercial viability. China's doing a lot of that in-house. Also, a lot of the breakthroughs are coming from China now or in mm. Chinese research institutions and Chinese laboratories. Uh, certainly, when we talk about things like uh, uh, carbon capture, you've, uh, there's only a few demonstration projects in the whole world previously, and I think a lot of them showed pretty bad results or not, at least not great results. Uh, and now China is going to have to innovate to make those more viable. That's happening in China. Uh, so it's, it's a mixture of both. And then, of course, there are international collaborators, too. A lot of international countries and companies know that if you want to partner and you want to build and you want to have a demonstration going, that China is a really good place to try to pursue that. I'm glad you brought up uh, nuclear because we know that nuclear construction in China is going ahead full steam. They have something like 37 nuclear reactors. They've built that in the last decade or so. Talk to us about China's nuclear ambitions uh, and how we can help to rebalance China's energy mix. Yeah, sure. So a lot of nuclear is being constructed. A lot more nuclear is planned. Uh, the official targets state for 10 gigawatts a year. That's 10 full gigawatt-sized reactors per year, every year for the next 30 years. Unless the technology changes or the plan changes, we can expect to see 10 a year for the foreseeable future. And nuclear is really important in the mix because, as you know, uh, other clean technologies like wind or solar, they're great, but they also need to be paired with storage. You also have to worry about load following. When you bring on a gigawatt of wind or solar, you can't necessarily retire a gigawatt of coal or gas, but that's not the case with nuclear. When you bring on one gigawatt of nuclear, you can immediately correspondingly retire one gigawatt of a fossil fuel generator. That's something that nuclear can do that other variable generators just can't do on their own. Uh, David, you and I remember the Fukushima incident and how tragic that was. Talk to us about China's expertise and skill when it comes to designing uh, and constructing these nuclear reactors and the safety parameters involved. Yeah, sure. China, generally in the nuclear industry, has taken a very, very conservative approach. Uh, no one likes to be the first. No one likes to be the, you know, the, the guinea pig when it comes to trying out new nuclear mitigation strategies or design strategies. And in pretty much every case that I've ever encountered, the Chinese regulators' approach to nuclear safety has been to first see what others are doing in France or in the United States and then try to go one step more conservative. Uh, so if you design that wall to be two meters thick, I will design it to be three meters thick because that's more conservative and that must be better. I, I see that attitude throughout a lot of the Chinese nuclear industry, that conservative and more safe is better because we don't want to be the first ones to try something and find out the bad way 
that it's not the right way. 